So you became the Poppy family. Yes. I and mean, that's what that one record is that I have down there. That's what the one album cover I have that you actually signed down there, that's as opposed to with the record in it. The rest of them all have their records, but they're not signed. So well, there you go. Before you go, you're going to have to sign a couple of things. Um, the um, So you became the Poppy family. Right. and you're mar Were you married at this time? No. You don't get married yet? No, not yet. So you're like 18 years old, and... You're forming a group. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can't let it go just like that. No, this has only got the two of you, and there's no picture of anybody else on the back. We were married in that picture. Oh, you're married, yeah. in, you're married in that picture. Yeah, and that, that album, um, this is Terry Jackson, The Poppy Thumb. That was, it was, that was, oh gosh, that was a KTEL record. That was, this after, is a actually, that was put out after I left Terry. Oh, were you? Yeah. Was it? Okay. Yeah, the KTEL. Yeah. Terry Jacks, Terry Jacks, the Poppy family. I want you to love me by Susan Jacks, you see, so head over heels. So when it says the pop Poppy family, that's the two of you. Yes. Concrete C is Terry alone. Well actually the Poppy family, well you know, and I feel very strongly about this because when we started we had there were four of us in the group. Uh, there was Terry and myself. And Craig McCaw and Satwant Singh. Satwant mm -hmm. played uh, tablas, and, yeah. and uh, uh, Craig played lead guitar, and Terry played rhythm, and I sang. I was the vocals. And but there was when we first started, there was a really, really good feeling about. Mm -hmm. uh, we were all young and trying to get the the group happening, and oh, it's just fabulous. And um, so to me, that was the Poppy family. After they left. I kind of almost felt, I felt like I was, you know, basically I was a soloist after that because mm -hmm. I don't feel there was still any more. It was because, um, you know, Terry, he was writing and everything, but, but as far as the whole group thing, there was no more group. It was, you know, without the boys there, I felt just terrible when they were gone, mm -hmm. you know. It just wasn't the same to me. Well, he, he of course, became famous for Seasons in the Sun. Right. That was the one that did. So you break up with Terry. Right. You marry Ted. Yes. How did you meet Ted? How did you meet a Saskatchewan Rough Rider? Oh, he was playing for the BC Lions. Oh, he was playing, yep. He was playing for the BC Lions. And and so you got picked no, up we didn't by even a, like got, each other. You got picked up by a football player. No, we didn't like each other. <laughs> oh. We met each other and absolutely didn't like each other. And it, uh, you know... Um, met through some friends. They were very good friends uh, of Ted and I'm just trying to remember. I think I had gone out with, with the, this couple, these friends of mine, and at that time I had no idea that they knew Ted. And I met him at some club downtown, I think. And I thought, and I was just, oh brother, <laughs> you know, a jock and he's just all full of himself and you know, whatever. And so, I mean, I was nice. I mean, mm -hmm. I wasn't being awful to him, but I just was. You I weren't think, being bitchy. I was, no, just, I wasn't being bitchy. I just thought, I just was not interested. <laughs> but you weren't taking him home with you that night. No, I, that wasn't my style anyway, but absolutely not. I was not, I, I wasn't particularly impressed with him. Now I find out later he wasn't impressed with me. <laughs> 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 because, and it's probably because I wasn't impressed with him. Yeah. But um, because these friends, these mutual friends were, were very very good friends. We, we ran into each other a couple more times and and I think we realized that we misjudged each other. Okay, mm. fine. And Because uh, he really was a, a really good guy. He really was a good guy. Yeah, mm. he... Um, we... Uh, after... Gosh, we had, had Thad, our son, when Thad was about five and a half or almost six, we moved down to Tennessee to Nashville when I recorded down there and was a songwriter and then Ted still lives in Tennessee. Thad, our son Thad, still lives Thad yeah. Still lives Thad in still lives in, in Tennessee. We moved Ted and I moved back um, let me see, four years ago, a little over four mm -hmm. years ago, four and a half years ago. And he maybe. was very sick at the time and you nursed yeah. him for two, he, three years and yeah. passed away last year. Yeah, he, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, but Thad has stayed. He he went down after his dad passed away. He he uh, Wanted to stay down in Tennessee for a mm -hmm. while because he grew up there since yeah. he was six. And, you know. No, so. home is where the heart oh, is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you marry Ted Tuszynski. You live in Tennessee. 
and you come back to Vancouver. Right. What do you do? Well, I know we had the concert in Maple right. Ridge, and you did some PR work and some of this and some of that, and uh, Red Robinson, you were in contact with the game, and uh, Bob, Bobby Ackles and so on. Right. So you came back, and I guess Richard, because Richard knew you from 1969 or some such That's place. Right. What? That's right. <laughs> and this wasn't the Freddie Wood Theater, was it? This was no. the Student Union Building, the sub. Okay. Just got to keep track. And um, now you're putting another record together? Or what are you doing? Just I guess you call right. them CDs now. Yeah, I know. Although vinyls are becoming popular again. Have you heard that? I've heard that. But then what yeah. are they going to do with all, you know, when people start buying vinyls, they have to reinvent the uh, the. Uh, Turntable. Again. Well, I got one right I up got one too. <laughs> <laughs> I got one too. Actually, I got one of the newfangled ones that where you can, <clears throat> excuse me, actually, uh, you know, it's got a, a um, what do you call that? USB port thing. Oh, yeah. So you can just sort of transfer all my vinyl onto Well, this a, is actually a really you? expensive set. If Mitchell piled it all up there, he decided to take it apart, and I got to get him to put it back together because it's got a reel to reel tape recording too. Yes. And I don't even remember who it was. I found a tape the other day of some very famous person that was taped to recorded up my copy house one time. Oh, and, you know, Red that's Robin probably worth some money now. Well, I think it is. I've got to play it. Red Robinson, of course, made a, I understand, made a fortune from selling some of his Beatles stuff that was there or was, became, was comfortable with it anyway. Some of these old tapes are oh. amazing. Uh, people are so into, uh, which is nice for me, <clears throat> so into vintage. and. Uh, well, I actually got to be a maitre d' at the Hungry Eye in San Francisco at one time, which was pretty famous for all yes. that stuff. And that's what I always wanted to do. Jack Crane had a radio program that he broadcast live from the Hungry Eye, and I was fascinated with that. And that's all I ever wanted to do was do a late-night radio show. And I finally got it with CKO Radio, and they, they signed me on Thursday... The guy, I beside myself, they closed down the next day. The management <laughs> of the station did not know. And Shirley Stalker phones and says, David, they just closed CKO. Because I told her I was about to start, and she phones me at 1 o'clock and says, David, the CKO just closed down. I said, what do you mean just closed down? And uh, <laughs> at 12 noon... Toronto time, 9 o'clock Vancouver time, and whatever it was, uh, 1.30, and they were there at 1 o'clock, and they were in Halifax, and they were in Montreal, and Toronto, and Edmonton, Calgary, and Vancouver. Well, there was 11 stations. I haven't got them all. Ottawa. <sighs> Agribusiness, whatever it is, made some decision that they didn't want the radio station, and instead of selling them or something, they just closed it down. You know, some guy said, close the sucker. And Brinks, or one of those armed guards, came into the station here in Vancouver, for instance. Squire Barnes was working there at the time. And they just came in, and they herded them all out the door. <laughs> Wouldn't even let, they couldn't even go back in and take a pencil. That all had to be, or, you know, they, they left something under the counter. That was there, and it took days or weeks before anybody was allowed back in to get their stuff. They just came in and moved them all out, and the fellow in Toronto on the national news at 12 noon, which is 9 o'clock here, gets there as he's reading the news. I can't remember his name. I knew him, but I can't remember his name. Bob McLean was working there at the time. They came in, handed this pen, and said, read this. And he takes the paper and says, the CKO radio network is no more. They pulled the turn the transmitters off in every city. Oh, my gosh. All the dreams and aspirations of a bunch of people. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, so right now what you're doing, you've been doing interviews and you've been doing, uh, you're trying to put, you're putting a disc, uh, CD together. Yes. All my own songs this time. All your own songs. Yes. I was and a staff songwriter in Nashville for, for a few years. So, so these are all going to be your own songs. Yes. Did you sing any of them at Maple Ridge? I sang, I think, two or three of them. Okay. I'm trying to think. I knew at least two that were mine. Okay. And uh, I didn't throw in too many of them because I think a lot of people want to hear... Well, they want to hear the old stuff. Yeah. It's a ret 